The mid-size segment of snowmobiles is my favorite for a couple of reasons. Now, don't get me wrong, I still like performance snowmobiles, but the mid-size stuff reminds me of my youth, when I was just getting involved in snowmobiling and developing my passion for this sport, but also how the mid-size segment invites new riders and the youth into this next generation of snowmobilers. Here on STV, you've seen the first sled that I rode as a youngster, a 1980 Skidoo Citation, which is still in the family, still hauling kids around the backyard, and hopefully still creating future sledders. Now, the Citation wasn't that old when I started riding it back then, and was also pretty typical of the sleds that you'd find in the used market. Now, back then, those sleds were pretty simple mechanical devices and easy to keep running, and way smaller and less powerful than the sleds are today. Plus, the vintage thing, it hadn't really caught on yet, so there was plenty of sleds like this in the used market that a lot of us youngsters cut our teeth on. Simpler times maybe, but snowmobiling was again increasing in its popularity going into the early 90s to hit a high in 1997 of somewhere in the neighborhood north of 250,000 new units sold. Numbers that the industry hasn't seen since, but it should also be noted that this modern day high is still less than half the number of total sales from back in the early 70s, where some reports have sales numbers above 600,000 units. I've been heavily involved in snowmobiling since I was a kid, and from about 1998 and on, I've spent a good portion of my adult life making my living as part of the snowmobile media, so I've seen all of this. Now, those huge numbers of the mid-90s have been steadily decreasing since then, and we have had a bit of a bump recently, but last year, there was only just over 130,000 units sold worldwide, which is still dismal compared to the numbers of the mid-90s. All of this has made attracting new riders to snowmobiling more difficult for the industry as a whole, which for a long time focused on performance as a force for sales and didn't spend much time developing the overall market. The first manufacturer to really look at this entry-level category was Skidoo with the introduction of their freestyle. Now admittedly, this thing was a bug-eyed, ugly duckling, but at least there was an attempt made by a manufacturer to focus on this category that would appeal to youth and new riders. More recently, Polaris remodeled an existing sled in their lineup, creating the Evo, which at the time was in a chassis similar to other models in the lineup, but lower to the ground and equipped with a shorter seat to accommodate smaller frames. In fact, this sled is still in the 2023 Polaris lineup as well, and is an extremely fun and good looking sled to ride. Since the introduction of the Evo, there have been a couple of key snowmobiles into the entry level category, starting with the creation of the 200cc class, which came out of the technological partnership between Articat and Yamaha. In 2018, the Yamaha Snow Scoot and the Articat ZR200s were introduced. With a chassis developed by CAT and a Yamaha engine sourced from a generator of all things, these sleds are SSCC certified, meaning they're trail legal and a significant step forward from the 120 class yard toys they share some common components with. However, the 200 class is decidedly dedicated towards youth, and even though they are trail legal, they are a little small and underpowered for a big day out on the trails. Not saying you can't ride them on the trails, I'm just saying be careful choosing the time and place. In model year 2020, we start to see the emergence of true mid-sized snowmobiles with the appearance of the Articat Blast and the Yamaha Venom. These machines are built on true mid-sized chassis with all the bells and whistles that you'd expect on quote unquote full-size snowmobiles. Perhaps the most significant thing here is that these sleds are cool looking and not some detuned relic built on leftover parts bin components. This sled has been designed up to appeal for not only younger riders, but for adults as well who don't want to ride an intimidating 200 horsepower monster. With a goal of targeting this mid-sized consumer, I believe these sleds hit the bullseye right in the center. In riding these machines, you don't feel at all like you're on some sort of a compromise. What you will feel is a fun snowmobile that's easy to operate and not overwhelming at all to ride. It is built on a smaller chassis that suits smaller riders very well, but somehow it's not cramped feeling for adults approaching 6 feet. Plus, there's enough power out of the fuel-injected 397cc two-stroke engine to easily propel the sled to speeds past any posted trail limit with a very linear power delivery. This makes these sleds very friendly to ride for beginners just starting to develop their riding skills, but will also keep experienced riders entertained.
For model year 2023, Skidoo has focused some of its power into this midsize-ish category with the introduction of the Neo and Neo Plus models. These sleds are not built on a mid-size chassis like the 400s, but instead utilize the Gen 4 as the platform for these entry-level units. Skidoo is taking a similar approach as Polaris did with their Evos by downsizing an existing platform, but unlike the Evo, have included a much more modern 600 EFI two-stroke liquid Rotax engine rated at 40 horsepower in the standard Neo and 60 for the Plus models. Bottom line with either Neo is that they're both a fun, good-looking sled that will absolutely treat any rider from novice to expert to the experience of snowmobiling. Each of these sleds from the four manufacturers represent quality snowmobiles in this emerging mid-size class, even if they're not all built specifically on mid-size sleds. Now, these machines represent a true push by the industry to attract and keep new riders to the snowmobiling lifestyle. One bright spot is that the participation of snowmobiling remains strong when you look at the number of snowmobiles registered to go on the snow, meaning that even though new sled sales aren't as strong as they could be, the snowmobile life cycle is definitely getting longer. Back in the day, most people would buy a new sled every year or every two years. Now, those same folks are holding on to the sleds maybe two, three, or four years before they replace them. The question remains to be answered. Will these mid-sized sleds feed into creating and sustaining the snowmobiling population? Or in 30 years, if there is recreational snowmobiling anymore, will these mid-sized sleds be looked upon like gold member here as a valiant effort by the manufacturers to invite new people into snowmobiling, but ultimately a bit of a failure? Time will tell. But I think this class will be one of the reasons we will have a strong snowmobiling community well into the future. And that is my favorite thing about this class of snowmobiles. At least the new stuff isn't brown and gold. <laughs>